Hi, my name is Hayley Leonard and I'm the lead nurse at Nolan. Um, COVID-19 has had a huge impact on clinical practice in transplantation. Uh, the most obvious one being the introduction of telemedicine, so that's um, the use of video or telephone for consultations. Um, and I think overall this has been quite well received. There are obvious benefits to this, especially for our patient group who are quite vulnerable. Um, the, you know, the ease of being able to contact teams uh, without the, the, the worry of travel or the cost of that, um, and especially for patients who have been shielding, um, is, is fairly obvious and has been fairly well voiced by our patients. Um, but there are some um, concerns that I think we need to be mindful of. Um, transplantation is a really challenging treatment for both the patient and also for the healthcare professionals that are delivering the care and support. Um, and we rely really heavily on building really positive, good relationships with patients and families. And I think there have been some concerns about how we manage to do that in a virtual platform. Um, we, we, we value sitting down with our patients and being in a room with them um, and uh, doing everything uh, you know, virtually, I think hinders that in some way. There's a concern that the loss of human connection can affect those relationships. Um, and I think moving forward, we need to make sure that we don't lose that um, in building those relationships. Um, I think the very practical element as well of being at home, there's distractions with um, families and children sometimes distract the consultation, as well as having difficult conversations like this. It's, um, you know, it's really tricky to do that uh, and not be able to be in the room and give support to the patient if you're delivering bad news. And also having that news delivered to you in your own home and then putting down the phone or turning off the laptop um, and just being left in your own space in your own home. I think there's a lot we need to think about with that. Um, I think how we support patients has changed. Um, it's still being done in, you know, in an excellent way, but it, it's changed. Um, obviously patients transplants have been delayed. They've been delayed to treatment. Um, there's a lot of anxiety and concern around that. Um, although a lot of teams have managed to keep going with a lot of transplants, there have been some delays. Um, and then the really obvious things like not being able to have visitors um, or have someone with you when you come to an appointment. Um, our patients rely massively on having that support from their family and friends when they come in for their long stays for their transplant. Um, and not having that, I think, has had a huge, a huge impact on what is already an isolating treatment. It becomes even more isolating. Um, and then not having the peer support. So going to clinic. Um, meeting other patients going through similar treatments, I think they get a lot, a lot from that. There's a lot of value in that, and they've lost that as well. So again, adding to the feeling of isolation. Um, and it's been left to the healthcare professionals, really, to deliver a lot of that psychological support. Um, so the ward nurses have done more of that on the wards because no family and friends have been able to come in. A lot of the CNSs have had to take a lot more calls of, you know, from very anxious patients who and not knowing what's happening with their treatment, and then are having to shield for a lot longer period of time. And, and equally, for healthcare professionals, we need to be careful about, um, you know, the fear of burnout for them for providing this ongoing psychological support and their changes in practice. So a lot more home working. So, you know, they're not seeing their peers so much at work. And, and I think a lot of healthcare professionals, especially nurses, get a lot of support from that peer-to-peer -peer support. And, and that's been, been lost in some ways. So we need to be really careful about um, burnout for, for healthcare professionals. Um, and I guess overall what this is highlighted is the importance of clinical psychologists within transplant teams and psychological support, um, not just for patients, but also for healthcare professionals. Um, and I guess, you know, thinking about the future and, and moving forward, there is still a lot of uncertainty. Um, I don't think anyone really knows what the future looks like in terms of um, practice. I don't think we'll go back to the old model of care. I think there will be a balance between the virtual and the face-to-face. -face. Um, but I think whatever we do, we need to make sure that we include our patients in those decisions. Understandably, things happen really quickly in, in the beginning. Um, uh, and that, that's absolutely what needed to happen. But now we, when we have a little bit more time, we need to make sure that we include the patient voice in, in these changes in practice. I think it's a really good opportunity to do that um, and to uh, you know, have services that, that really have the patient at the center of them. Uh, and I think if we do continue with telemedicine, we need to make sure that we invest in telemedicine so that it's sustainable. 
And we also need to make sure there's equal access for um, all patients to be able to um, you know, access video platforms as well as uh, telephone, um, because I think there has been some concern that all patients have got the ability to access laptops and um, have consultations virtually. And then finally, I guess the other thing that I think we really need to invest in um, that has come from this is the psychology, you know, supporting our patients and our healthcare professionals, uh, supporting their well-being, investing in you know, psychological services. Um, and I think we should be, you know, normalizing that as part of the treatment for patients and the support we provide to healthcare professionals and encouraging them to access it.